Hey guys, it's Boma here. I've been working on the VFR all day. My hands are a little dirty, grungy, whatever. Um, <laughs> but it made me think to want to do a video on what is in a basic motorcycle toolkit. Uh, this video is not for my experienced and mechanically adept riders, but for more my my new guys. So we're gonna cover uh, what's in your bike's toolkit. <music> In order to cover the widest spectrum I could, I took one Honda toolkit out of my CBR and a Kawasaki toolkit out of my ZX-12, and over here on the ground here, or at least on this box anyway, on the right side, oh, that's not my right, that's my, that's my left. On the right side, on my left side, we have the Honda CBR toolkit, and on the other side, which is the right, we have the <laughs> ZX-12. Now, if you're riding a Harley, things get a little bit more complicated. You'll need a toolkit like this. I'm just kidding, guys. But anyway, um, let's open these guys up. Um, the magic word is abracadabra. Uh, Bellman needs a beer. That's much better. We've, we've got the, the beer over here, which is most important. And yes, I'm drinking and vlogging. I don't recommend this if you're under 21 or if you're planning on riding, but I am not doing either, so we're good to go. Now, mind you, this video is not for my experienced riders or my mechanically inclined riders. This is a very basic um, tutorial video on what this toolkit is. One of the things I pride myself in is that a lot of the newer, more inexperienced riders tend to ask me questions that are on the absolute basic level because they feel comfortable and then they, they know I won't judge them on you know, being a newbie and you know that's really cool to me. So anyway, not for my experienced riders. But uh, on the left side, we have the Honda toolkit. On the right side, we have the Kawasaki toolkit. Now, mind you, a lot of these tools are redundant to both machines. They're both Japanese motorcycles, and they'll have a lot of the same type tools. So we'll go over the Honda toolkit, and we'll eliminate the redundant tools in the Kawasaki toolkit. Well, the first thing I want to talk about are these guys. They're just your standard crescent wrench. Um, this guy is a 12.8, and whoa! The other guy that fell out of, out of the camera is a 12.10. Honda likes to use um, 12, 8, and 10 millimeter bolts all over the bike, so these guys are extremely handy. Um, the reason there are two, two 12s and that they're redundant is there can be situations where you may be loosening and tightening a 12 millimeter, uh, 12 millimeter bolt at the same time, so that's why you got the doubles. Now, Mind you, I'll take these out of the way so we know we've we've covered them. Now, mind you, the uh, toolkit that comes with the motorcycle is really for emergency roadside use only. These are not the best tools available to you. I wouldn't use these in a garage doing any kind of mechanical work, but um, they can be a lifesaver on the side of the road. A lot of the newer high-performance superbikes are nowadays kind of taking and removing the toolkits because they... Performance numbers is all, you know, everything to them and they want to eliminate that extra, you know, two pounds of weight. So some of the newer bikes don't even have toolkits and I think that's kind of a kind of a crap deal. But pressing on, a uh, pair of pliers, just generic, generic pliers, um, you know, whatever. You can use these for a lot of things. Um, the big thing in a kind of emergency situation you'd use this for that I can think of is removing the cotter pin from the axle. That's what I would use it for. Now we have a 30 millimeter um, wrench here. And I'll show you what this guy is used for. This right now is for unbolting the rear axle. Um, this is really handy if you need to adjust your chain. Um, and you may not have a wide enough um, socket in your toolkit, so this is, this is really handy to have. And over here we've got a 22, and this is for removing the front axle, like so. So we got your two, two closed end wrenches here, and this guy is used in conjunction with these. Um, it's just a flat piece of metal, it's hollow inside, and I'll show you. Kind of hard to do with the camera like so, but it just connects to them and it 
has a little bit of a leverage so you get a little bit more torque when you have to um, remove those bolts. So pretty cool stuff and that's, and that's what this guy is using. Now over here we just have a standard screwdriver handle and it's got two screwdriver adapters. There's a flat, a flat head right there and a Phillips. And they just go in there and you just use them as a screwdriver. Cool, simple, easy, good. This guy is an Allen key. And I believe it's a five millimeter, four millimeter. I, I don't know off the top of my head. But this is kind of your standard size for removing um, fairing bolts from a Honda. And this guy is pretty handy to have if you've got to open up your fairing there. Cool? Cool. Now, now we get into three really weird, unique tools that are in the Honda toolkit. Now this is a spanner wrench and it's notched out for this guy again so that you can actually kind of stuff it up in there and get, get some more length and, and torque on that guy. Now this guy is for adjusting your suspension. We'll get under here right here and I'll show you what it's used for. But uh, I probably can't do this and do the camera at the same time without. But anyway Underneath here is, well, I can't even, this is impossible. Anyway, underneath there is where you adjust your preload um, for your suspension. So if you want to actually carry a passenger, or if you're a heavier dude, or girl, I guess, you adjust the preload on your rear shock. And like I said, it's virtually impossible to get the camera up in there, but uh, you'll get a spin with this wrench, and it'll clamp on there. and. Uh, you can dial it out the preload. Cool? Cool. Uh, now this guy is not for emergency side of the road maintenance. This is more of a routine um, maintenance thing. This is a spark plug wrench. As you see, it's got a hex open in there and it's got a little swivel pivot point right there. And it goes down into your head to actually pull the spark plug out. Now, if you're using this on the side of the road, you've got some serious problems and uh, you probably filed a spark plug out. So let's pray that never happens, but that, that's what that guy is for. Now this is a stupid thing right here. What this is for, it's a helmet lock because the Honda CBR 1000RR does not come with a standard helmet lock that, that most bikes do. So you take this and you wrap it around the chin bar of your helmet and then you lock it underneath one of the connecting parts of the seat. I would never do this. A friend of mine um, actually got his helmet stolen one time because somebody decided to take a knife um, and cut the chin strap off. Helmet was totally useless and uh, it was really stupid, but he actually had to ride home without a helmet because someone stole it because he locked it up to his bike. So, whatever. Now, we move on to Kawasaki. Kawasaki's got your same Allen keys. But instead of just one, they've got a large assortment of four. Other than that, they are exactly the same as the Honda ones. Same thing here with the crescent wrenches. The only difference is the redundancy for Kawasaki is you've got two tens. So apparently there are more situations where you'll be dialing out two tens on a Kawasaki versus twelves on a Honda. So pliers, covered them, got them, um, screwdrivers, exactly the same, the only difference is you got two Phillips heads, um, one's a little bit bigger than the other, cool, and then it's also doubled for the flat head, exactly the same, spanner wrench for your axle, we covered, cool, another spark plug wrench, exactly the same, the only difference is it actually has got a threaded piece in there. I don't know if you can see that. You could actually dial something in there if you wanted to. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird setup. I'm not sure because there's nothing in the kit that would thread into that. So I guess that's on your own if you need to, uh, to get some extra tools. And of course we have the breaker bar um, for this wrench right here. The only difference is it's kind of an oval shaped instead of uh, now this, I thought, was just the coolest thing ever. This is just an air pressure gauge, but, and you can't really, you can't really see it right there. I can't really get it focused, but right there, it says Japan. 
And every single air pressure gauge I've ever seen in my entire life is either made in America or China. So this is pretty cool. It's Japanese. And it's got that little nipple on there in case you're too delicate to actually press your uh, valve. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's kind of a trip. It's also got a clip on there. So it, I don't know what kind of situation you'd use this clip if you wanted to put it in your shirt and carry it around with you. But since it's in your toolkit underneath your seat, I, it's kind of silly. Now this guy actually puzzled me for a little bit. It took me a while to figure out what this thing was. After looking over the bike and checking it out, well, I'll show you. We'll just go over it and I'll show you what it is. On the Kawasaki ZX-12, and I don't know how many Kawasaki's are like this, this guy is your battery cover. And to access the battery, there is a recessed plate here and uh, this is just a standard eight millimeter bolt but for for that one you actually have to get in there you can't use the wrench and so what this is is Kawasaki's weird version of a deep well socket but instead of having a socket on the end of it it's just got a hole through there and then you would take one of your screwdriver extensions and just somehow jam it in a hole like that and use it as a T. It's very, very weird and this is a very much a emergency kind of situation. I don't know why they didn't put just a little tiny uh, ratcheting wrench in this, just a standard, uh, a standard deep well socket, but it's kind of cool, it's kind of unique. So anyway, that's, um, that's your toolkit, um, Honda and Kawasaki. If you guys have any questions, of course, you know, where to leave me comments and stuff. I wanted to show you this. Um, that is my Honda VFR. As you can see, she's in teardown mode, getting ready for BWOM 6. And that's